Hi everyone, welcome to another weekly Forex forecast. My name is Justin Bennett with Daily Price Action. And in today's forecast, we're gonna talk about the Euro USD, the Pound USD, the Dollar Yen, as well as the Australian Dollar and New Zealand Dollar versus the USD. We've seen a lot of consolidation recently, so I'm gonna show you some key areas I'm watching where we could see that consolidation end. Let's get to it right now. Quick disclaimer that today's video is for educational purposes only. All views are my opinion and are not intended as investment advice. Forex is a high reward, high risk business, and you should not trade with borrowed money or money you cannot afford to lose. See the description of this video for the full disclaimer. Before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button below and also click the bell icon so you get notified every time I post these videos. First up, we have the Euro USD, and this pair is still defined by these channels. So if you remember, we had this larger descending channel that dates back to 2018. So we've been tracking this now for over a month and you can see where the Euro did come off this channel bottom recently. So we've had this swinging action and recently the pair did come off of that 109 area that we've been talking about. It also broke above this shorter term descending channel, which then triggered a 200 pip move up here into some of these lows. We also have a new ascending channel that I wrote about last week. So if you notice the upper level of this channel includes several touches. However, so far we really haven't seen whether or not this lower level is gonna become a factor. We also have the 109.90 level as well as 110.20. So notice how 109.90 served as support back here and also resistance 110.20 is a little bit harder to identify, but we can see how it was support through this area. Support again, resistance, and then once again, support. So this area between 109.90 and 110.20 is going to be one to watch this week. Now, I'm not bullish the Euro. I'm essentially just watching to see what happens in this area. Of course, the longer term trend here is still pointed lower. So we have to respect that but at the same time, we also have to respect the fact that this swing high up here was higher than some of these previous swing highs while the pair was in this descending channel. So we have to respect that as well, which means that if we do see bullish price action from down here, it could be a pin bar or it could be an engulfing candle of some sort. If we do see some kind of buy signal between 109.90 and 110.20, that could trigger a move higher over the coming weeks. Alternatively, if we see the pair close below this channel bottom, that would be a sign of weakness and it would also expose the year to date lows just below 109. I'll also be keeping a close eye on this 110.70 level. So notice how significant this has been ever since this price action back here. So it even supported the pair recently, but then broke down this past week which is what triggered that move lower. So essentially, right now I'm just keeping an eye on the Euro to see what happens between 109.90 and 110.20. This confluence of support could become significant over the coming sessions. I'm also watching 110.70 with a break back above that, taking us back to these October and early November highs. Now, again, a close below this channel though would signal weakness and would also expose that 109 support area. The British pound versus the US dollar ended last week right at support. So I wrote about this pair last week and I noted how the future direction would hinge on 127.70. So notice how this 127.70 area served as support back here. The pair then broke below it on this candle and 127.70 started to attract sellers. Now, ever since the pound broke back above this area back here, we've then seen it act as support. And again on Friday, we saw the pair stop right above that 127.70 area. As for trends, we know that the British pound is still caught in this downtrend against the USD. So the longer term trend is pointed lower. However, just keep in mind that ever since this break that we caught back here, this break of descending channel resistance that led to this rally, the pullback, and then this massive 800 pip move higher. 
So right now, the pair is carving these higher lows and also higher highs. So that's something to keep in mind if you are looking to short the British pound. It may not be a bad idea to short it if we get a close below 127.70 for a move back down to 125.70. Just keep in mind that right now the short the short term uptrend is pointed higher. But it's all going to come down to whether we get a close below 127.70 or bullish price action of some sort. That could be a pin bar or it could be an engulfing candlestick. Either way, I'm watching to see what happens at 127.70, either a close below or a buy signal from this area for a move higher. Again, a close below 127.70 would take us back to 125.70 with bullish price action from this area, perhaps taking us back to some of these highs just below that 130 handle. So that's what I'm watching for on the GBP USD right now. Just keep in mind too that an, an end to this consolidation would be ideal. So recently, ever since the pair got above 127.70, we've seen consolidation. And this is the type of price action that I like to avoid. So I do want to see a break from this range, preferably, before I do anything on the British pound. The dollar yen is still sending conflicting signals. And the reason I say that is because we still have this inverse head and shoulders that, in my opinion, could still be intact. So if you remember, we had this potential inverse head and shoulders that I talked about, where we had the left shoulder over here. We then had the head and also the right shoulder. So the pair did break out on this candle and we can see how it's currently serving as support. This does indicate a move higher. However, at the same time, we also have this rising wedge which you can see how just last week that that wedge top became a factor once again. So even though the pair closed above this 109 level, buyers were unable to break the top of this wedge pattern. So as long as this rising wedge is intact, I have to be very, very hesitant about getting bullish the dollar yen. So this movement right here is the type of indecision that I hinted at at the beginning of this video. So I think when markets do this, you have to be careful about trying to sell or buy a market like this because right now we have no clear direction. At the moment, I see this as consolidation and the bigger move here is going to come once we see either a break from this wedge top or we see a move below this wedge bottom and especially back below this neckline. So right now, as long as the pair is in this area, it's going to be really difficult to try to determine a likely future direction and gain any type of significant momentum. Now, if we do see a break higher, I will be keeping a close eye on that 11060 level that we've been talking about for several weeks now. And I'll also be watching that 11230 resistance area if we do get a close above 11060. Now, alternatively, if we see a close below this wedge support and a rotation lower, of course, we need to keep an eye on this level that I just pointed out, but a break below that would re-expose 106.80 based on some of these lows and these highs through this area. A close below that would then expose some of these year-to-date lows around 105. Next, we have the Australian dollar versus the US dollar. And this is one that I've talked about a couple of times recently as well. And we've been watching this descending channel that has formed since this top back here in 2018. So notice we have several highs that touch off of this channel top. And just recently we saw the pair come into this resistance area once more. So notice how on this candle, this was the first retest. And then the Australian dollar just held below this channel top and above that 6880 area that I mentioned last week. However, Friday's candle did close below 6880. So for the week ahead, I would expect to see sellers come out and try to defend 6880 as resistance. Now, we also have 6810 support down here based on some of these highs back through this area, as well as this high right here and then these lows 
that trigger this push up into the channel top. So right now, this week, it's going to come down to what happens at 68.80 resistance as well as 68.10 support. So as long as the Australian dollar remains below 68.80 on a daily closing basis, I do favor a move down here to 68.10. Now, it's going to take a close below that to expose some of these lows from earlier this year and especially that area around 67. So notice how many lows there are through that area. But first, it's going to come down to what happens at 68.10. Alternatively, if we do see the Australian dollar versus the USD close back above this 68.80 level, it would then re-expose this channel top. And I also think that if we see it close back above 68.80, it would signal that this was a false break and could even send the pair higher. But for now, I do expect sellers to come out, defend 68.80, as long as the pair remains below that level, that 68.10 support level is exposed. Last but not least, we have the New Zealand dollar versus the USD. And this is one that we've been watching, specifically this inverse head and shoulders pattern. So notice how since coming off of this bottom around 62, the pair had formed this inverse head and shoulders where we have the left shoulder back here, the head, and the right shoulder. Now, the key here was a close above that 6430 area. So we discussed this one a few times and notice how it's the intersection of this neckline resistance. And it's also a key horizontal level based on these highs back here, as well as several lows through this area. Now the pair never did close the day above this level. And this is why I favor daily charts that use a New York close because anything else, if you just tried to go long on a break above this, both of these candles technically broke above 64.30 intraday. However, neither of them closed the day above that level. So you can also see where the New Zealand dollar carved this bearish engulfing range, which did hint at a pullback into 63.50. And notice how on the very next candle, the pair retested 64.30 to the pip before moving down to 63.50. Furthermore, with Friday's close below 63.50, I do expect, just like the Australian dollar, I do expect sellers to come out and try to defend 63.50 this week. As long as they do, we could see a move into some of these lows from earlier this year. So if the pair stays below 63.50 on a daily closing basis, I do favor a move lower into some of these lows from earlier in the year. However, at the same time, if we do see it close back above 63.50, that would suggest that this was a false break and it would also re-expose this neckline as well as that 64.30 horizontal level. So as of right now, the pair does look set to move lower this week, but remember to stay flexible and also keep in mind that this breakdown was a Friday. So Fridays tend to have lower volume, which means that they are susceptible to a false break. So that means that if we see it close back above 6350, again, it would suggest that this was a false break. But as long as the pair stays below this, I have to favor a move lower back into some of these lows. So just stay flexible here and keep in mind too, that there is a chance we could see a move all the way back here to this left shoulder low before we get that move higher. So I mentioned this a couple weeks ago and it's important to stay flexible in cases like this, just in case we do see the pair pop higher and close back above 63.50. So I'm staying flexible here. I am expecting to move lower as long as we're below 63.50, but I'm also respecting the potential for this inverse head and shoulders to play out following a deeper right shoulder, perhaps back here into some of these lows. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave your comment below and be sure to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.